day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so today we uh, kick off the class of 2022 graduates. And this is a special day for Mount Horror because uh, we celebrate those Christian education um, youth and, and associates that are with the church. And uh, we celebrate them because they've made milestones in their education. Um, and so let's just go ahead and begin with the preschool to pre-kindergarten. The first graduate that we have, or promotion that we have from preschool to kindergarten is Desmond Marquise Franklin, Jr. Come on, Desmond. The next promotion that we have is kindergarten to elementary, and we have Bryson Richardson. Yay, Bryson. And Trinity Stevens. Amen, and they're being escorted by our wonderful pastor. All right, so the next promotion that we have is going to be from elementary to middle school. We have Logan Davis. We have Chauncey Franklin. Janaya Stevens. Jalen Williams. Okay, so the next group that you'll hear me call are high school graduates. The first graduate is Joshua Davis. Joshua is graduating from an Energy Institute High School. The next graduate is Isola Nicole Janice Flood, graduating from Westfield High School. The next graduate is Deshaun Henley. Deshaun is graduating from Marshall Senior High. The next graduate is Xavier James. Xavier is graduating from Klein High School. The next graduate is Kiara Kyles. Kiara is graduating from Hendrickson High School in Pflugerville, Texas. Our next graduate is Kendra Thompson. Kendra is graduating from the High School for Law and Justice. Our next graduate is Ramaya Winters. Ramaya is graduating from Stafford High School. Our, and our final high school graduate is Bryson Yarbrough. Bryson is graduating from C.E. King High School in Sheldon, Texas. All right, so the next group of graduates that I will introduce is our college graduates. And of course, we know all of these graduates are the hopes and the dreams of our future. And so that is why we celebrate them today. But from high school to on to the job world, we usually use college as that stepping stone. Um, and so today we celebrate Ashley Marie Bird. <laughs> Ashley is the daughter of Willie and Angelica Bird, granddaughter of Joyce M. Bird, and great granddaughter of Addie B. Harris. Ashley graduated from the University of Houston College of Liberal Arts and School Science on Friday, May 13, 2022, with a Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology and a Political Science minor. Ashley graduated with an academic honor of magna cum laude with a 3.7 GPA. Our 
next college graduate is Tiara Rodriguez. That's my baby. Tiara is the daughter of Deacon Trevor and Tamara Taylor. She graduated from Prairie View A&M University with a double major. She received a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering and a Bachelor of Science in Physics. Tiara will begin her graduate studies at Vanderbilt this fall. Our next college graduate is Tayshawn Burns. Tayshawn graduated from Lone Star College with an Associates of Arts. He is a student of Reverend Johnson. He was elected to the National Honor Society, joined the Honors College at Lone Star, and wants to thank his parents and siblings for all their support. Okay, Xavier. Xavier James is one of our high school graduates. He just was running a bit late, but he's walking in now. So give Xavier a round of applause. All right, and I did skip over the introduction of the, um, the graduates' background. Just a bit about Isla, Isla Nicole. Janice Flood, she's the daughter of Savannah Mal Malbro and Isaiah Flood and the granddaughter of Janice Scott, or Janice Scott. She is graduated from Westfield High School and she plans to attend Southern University in Baton Rouge this September. I still if you're in the building, wave at us so we can see you. All right, next we have Deshaun Henley. Deshaun is the proud son of Tamisha Stevens and grandson of Gail Stevens. Deshaun is graduating from Marshall High School. After graduating, Deshaun will be starting an apprenticeship with IPE Fitters Union. Woohoo! All right. Deshaun, are you in a building? Xavier. Is Xavier here today? Raise your hand, Xavier, so we can see you. Xavier is the son of Elizabeth James, grandson of Meredith and Joe James, and stepson of Keith Sias. The young man, Xavier, is graduating Klein Forest High School on May 7, 2022. When he graduates high school, he wants to go to college to pursue his dreams and do something that his family was never got to do due to things in the past that have blocked their paths from pursuing their dreams. He wants to go to college for acting and writing stories, and in the future would like to own his own business and make movies based on characters he created over the years. That's a woohoo! <laughs> and bring them to life for the world to watch. He wants to make an impact on the world and improve his acting and writing. Then, then do another two years transferring to a university uh, transferring to university to get even better. At the moment, he's looking through different colleges, but has his eye on Lone Star. Woohoo! Reverend Johnson is here. You're in the right house for that. And will hope his dreams aren't just dreams, but will make an impact on the world and will make his family and friends proud of him. Strength, mind, and heart is the key to success. And if not for the better, then never for the worst. Amen. All right. Kiara Kyles. Kiara, are you here? Say hi to everyone. All right, so Kiara is the daughter of Adrian and Keely Mosley. <laughs> granddaughter of Olinda Johnson. She is graduating with honors from Hendrickson High School in Pflugerville, Texas. In her four years of high school, Kiara has a, was a member of the National Honor Society, varsity tennis team, varsity cheer team, soccer debate team, girls avid club, student council, and musical theater. I'm tired just reading it. Since kindergarten, she has been an avid Girl Scout and volunteers with, the troop, with troop 1985. In addition to managing her challenging coursework and activities, Kiara has maintained 
employment throughout high school. Amen. Carol would like to thank her parents for their sacrifices, time, money, and effort that enabled her to reach her goals even when she doubted herself. Kira will attend Tennessee State University on a full academic scholarship in the fall. She is majoring in commercial music and a minor in political science. Her ultimate goal is to use her voice to change the world, one note, word, and policy at a time. Amen, all right. Next up, we have Ramaya Winters. Ramaya, hey Ramaya. Ramaya is graduating from Stafford High School. Ramaya is the daughter of Charles and Lakeisha Winters and the granddaughter of Sister Felicia Young. Ram Ramaya accepted Christ and was baptized by Pastor Smith when she was nine years old and was raised in the youth programs at Mount Horb. Uh, Baptist Church. While maintaining a GPA of 3.0, she is currently enrolled in the healthcare science program at Stafford High School. Ramaya plans to attend Oak Lee Cosmetology School in September and will also attend Ultrasound Tech School afterward. Woohoo! All right. Ramaya is determined and independent, and in the term, sorry, Ramaya is a determined and independent young lady who knows God, orders her steps. Psalms 37, 23 through 25. Amen. Good job, graduates. And our last high school graduate, Bryson Yarbrough. Bryson is the son of Donovan Yarbrough and Glenda Henson, and the grandson of Charles and Anna Runnels, and woohoo! And the grandson of David and Bryson, I'm sorry, and the grandson of David and Lena Henson. Bryson is graduating from C.E. King High School, Sheldon ISD, on May 27, 2022. Bryson has played varsity basketball all four years of high school, strengthening his IQ for the sport and maturing him on the court. In addition to playing an intricate part of his high school sport and maturing him on, I'm sorry, his IQ for the sport and maturing him on the court. In addition to playing an intricate part in his high school basketball team, he excelled in his coursework, awarding him a spot in the National Honors Society. He, he has remained with his youth ministry in Gethsemane Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend Dennis Jones and has been a member since the age of four years old. During his membership, at Gethsemane, Bryson was a member of the Youth Council, Youth Church Choir, Youth My Ministry, and Youth Drill Team. During his summer vacations, he participated with numerous AAU sport teams, affording him opportunities to travel throughout the nation, obtaining various tournament awards with constant prayer, sweat, and tears. His efforts and grits have gotten him an offer to one of our nation's D2 junior college, University, Wilbur Wright University in Chicago, Illinois. All right, amen. Where he plans to major in business management, the scripture Bryson keeps in his heart is Psalm 73, 26, which reads, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. All right, so this concludes the introduction of our graduates. Thank you all graduates for participating, amen. Graduates, congratulations again. Next, we're gonna have a greeting by Jasmine Smith. Thank you, family and friends, for being here to see all the graduates and go through with them all the hardships that they have been through. Um, so, from
from me and the church. Everyone, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. Next, we're going to have the introduction of speakers by Sister Ariana. Good morning. Dr. Gladys Smith Moton is a proud member of the Mount Horeb Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of Dr. Samuel H. Smith Sr. Not only is Dr. Smith her spiritual father, he and the lovely Silver Smith are her biological parents. Dr. Smith, no, Dr. Moton is number seven of eight children. She is the mother of three fabulous daughters and Gigi to two amazing grandchildren. She served on Mount Horeb's executive board. She's an active member of both Limit of Worth and the Christian Education Department. Dr. Moton received her Bachelor's of Science in Education from Texas Southern University, Master's of Education from Prairie View a &M University, and Doctor's of Education from the University of Houston. As a child, she knew she wanted to be an educator. She followed her passion as she served 34 years in the field of education prior to retiring in 2019. From 1985 to 1991, she served as a classroom teacher. She was promoted to Skills Specialist in 1991 and served in that position for three years. She became an assistant principal in 1994. After serving seven months as an assistant principal, God shared with her in a dream to apply for the job of principal, even though she did not meet any of the application requirements due to her lack of experience, experience as an AP. Dr. Moton was obedient in the Holy Spirit and was promoted to principalship in 1995, where she served in that role for 24 years. During her 24 years as principal, she led three campuses and was given the opportunity to open two new schools. Dr. Moton, continues her work with education, serving as a supervisor to some of all Dean ISD's out-of-state student teachers. Dr. Moton is also an adjunct professor at Houston Baptist University. She teaches a principal internship course in the master's program. In 2021, God gave Dr. Moton the vision to start Moton Heritage LLC with her family in mind. She is on a quest to build a legacy for her family. She and her daughters had several meetings and decided to open a franchise. After some research, they signed a franchise agreement with Cineholic, which is a gourmet cinnamon roll bakery. Cineholic was featured on Shark Tank. The contractors are busy with the build-out preparing for the grand opening in June. Dr. Moton is a firm believer that all things are possible with God. Thank you. Next, we're going to have a musical selection about my horror's very young choir.
Thank you, Dr. Gladys, for that wonderful message. I know there were times where I didn't understand the words of the wise, but the Lord, he brought it up during those times that I needed the most. So even though you might not understand it now or it might not seem like it applies to you now, just know that he'll bring it back up into your spirit so that you will have those words of encouragement and to know that he is there with you always. All right, so next we'll have the musical selection by Mount Horeb. Thank you. Let's worship God together this morning. Put your hands together. I was thinking as the graduates were walking in about our final graduation called the rapture. I look at the caps and the gowns and I'm reminded that we have the equivalent after the rapture, what God gives us a brand new robe on that final promotion when we get to heaven. What a day, what a ceremony, what a graduation it's gonna be. And I can't wait. I can't wait to live forever. This has an expiration down here, but when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Come on here. Put your hands together, let's go to work.
Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. You know, behind such a fervent selection, we just want to keep the ball rolling. I'm going to ask that they do another number. Amen. For the rest of my life, I'll serve the Lord.
Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. How many of you know that God is your everything? He's your everything. I want to thank everyone who has participated up to now. But most of all, let me thank Dr. Moton, my daughter, for such a powerful message to us. And uh, her selection of scripture was not haphazardly, it was purposely. Amen. And uh, before we do the offertorial worship, permit me to focus your attention on one verse that Dr. Moton used. And I want you, if you have a Bible, to retrieve your Bible. Thank you, Sanctus. Retrieve your Bible and open your Bible to Jeremiah, the first chapter. Jeremiah chapter 1. There was a partic particular verse in that chapter that's applicable to every one of us. In other words, it, it, it can be applied to every one of us because this verse is not only talking to Jeremiah, this verse is talking to humanity, to every one of us. And that verse is verse number Five, Jeremiah 1, Amen. verse number 5. And that verse is speaking to every one of us in here. And that verse is speaking to mankind all over the land and country. That verse is the very voice of the maker, the very voice of God. And God is not just speaking to Jeremiah. God is speaking to humanity everywhere. And listen to the sovereign will, the sovereign voice of the Almighty. And as we read this verse, don't look at someone else, but look at yourself and say this verse is talking to me. And that verse is the voice of God speaking to humanity. And listen to what God say about you. God say, before I form you. Hallelujah. In other words, before you became a reality in society, God is saying that I'm the source and reason of your being. Amen. Amen. And so that verse says, before I form thee in the belly. Amen. In other words, before I put you inside of your mother, before you became a reality in
inside of your mother. Listen to what he says. I knew you. In other words, I knew exactly why I put you into your mother's womb. And I remember hearing a cliche, and that cliche was and still is, that God does not make junk. Junk is worthless. You can pass by in the scrapyard and see what used to be automobiles all crushed up because they became junk. Useless. And God did not make any of us a useless source. And I'm led to believe that Dr. Moton's selection of this particular passage was to convey to those that are on their way up the educational ladder to all remember that you're not a worthless piece of nothing, that you are worth. I don't know how many of you were listening as the graduates walked down the aisle, but there were a few that was highly recommended. Because they realized that they were worth something. And whenever you realize who made you and why he made you, you ought to persevere to try to become everything that God intend for you to become. Let me finish that verse. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee for what I made you to become. In this case, God is saying to Jeremiah that I form you to become a prophet, a foreteller. Every one of you that walked down the aisle today and took your seat. You ought to not allow the voice of Satan to get you here. Because Satan will try to endeavor to make us worth less. But if you let God get in your ear, 
he will give you a word. So that verse says, and I ordain thee to a prophet unto the nation. The reason why I stood and rehearsed this verse into your ears was to say to you, strive to be all that God made you to become. And don't let nothing and nobody tell you that you cannot achieve or persevere unless the God that made you say it is very possible. When I watched and I'm through when I say this. You walk down the aisle. I could envision the future doctors, the future lawyers, or whatever God intend for you to become in you as you walk down. And I said to myself, thank you, Lord, for not making us junk. Thank you for making us what you would have us to become. Failure is always available when you embrace failure. But success and victory can be yours. Let me give you a formula and I'm going to conclude. That formula is found in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, thy own understanding. See, the devil gets a hold of understanding and he holds on to the negative part and try to saturate you with negativism. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. How do you acknowledge him, Brother Pastor? When it seems like that you can't make it, look up to the one and say, God, I need your help. And he's a very present help. Is it anybody here beside me know that he is a very present help? in the time of me. Could I see your hand if you know he's a helper? Yes. Hallelujah. Very have present help in the time of trouble. So in my final saying, it will break my heart if I had to make visitation to the jailhouse or the prison system to visit you. But oh, it will make my heart rejoice in the future if I walk into classrooms and other places and see you sitting at the head of the harem, giving directions to humanity. 
because that will say this is the cause and the reason why I had the perseverance spirit. God has mold and shape and made me what he brought me into the world to become. I, I know I said I'm going to finalize my sin, but I can't without saying this and that is I'm not all that God would have me to become but I'm really striving to become that and I know that I can't do it on my own I had to look to him for guidance for directions and for his endeavorment in my life. I know it's not as the program is printed, but I'm the orchestrator and director of the program. So it's given time right now in the house of prayer. And as our ushers make preparations to receive what you plan to give unto the Mount Herb Church by way of offertorio worship. If you don't plan to give anything, then we receive nothing from you. But if you plan to honor what pastor is asking for, we receive it from you. Let us ask God's blessings upon our offertory of worship. God, we thank you for this moment. We pray that thou would sanctify the gift and the givers and let your blessings be in the abundance upon the ones that give and upon the ones that had it not to give. We know that all of our help come from you and whatever we are is because of you. Touch and sanctify the giver and bless the gift in Jesus' name, amen. As the ushers
blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you jesus for blessing me i just want to thank you for We're going to be blessed with another selection and then we'll get back to the planet program and follow it according to its directions. Let us hear from our music department.
I know that we're not at the ending of the program, but I feel that this is a good spot to extend the call to discipleship as I music ministry give an invitational song. There may be someone today that possibly did not enter into the whole of church with the desire to give their life to Jesus Christ. But after having listened to the song service and the message from our keynote speaker and other things that has taken place in the worship today, perhaps maybe you want to give your life to the Lord and, and further your perseverance, further your travel, further your going forward and companion yourself with the Lord himself and allow the Lord to direct and guide your footstep. If you don't have a church home, you may be able to find a larger church numerically and from a physical perspective. But I will guarantee you that the Spirit of God does not dwell more with them than it does with us. And if you want a Spirit-filled church to be your church home, we invite you to come and give your life to Jesus Christ and say yes to his will and yes to his way. If you've never been baptized, the acceptance of Jesus Christ also includes baptism. For when you listen to the Great Commission that Jesus himself gives in St. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every man. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. In other words, that word simply means be cut off from having an eternal pleasant existence. That you will have an eternal existence, but will not be a joyful one because those who go to the burning fire will not have peace of mind and joy but those that accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord will have eternal peace peace in their lives. So if you're here today and you want to accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord, 
we give you that opportunity by saying, come. Is there one today who will give their life to Jesus Christ? Will you come? Will you say, yes, I want Christ as my Savior and Lord. If you're here, will you come? It is ours to extend it has been in, has been and is yours to say yes or no. And you're not coming. You said no. God bless you today. It is our prayer for you. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Does your heart let the spirit control? Yes, you can, and how and sweet, sweet, and sweet rest, as you yield me, you're mighty, and so,
morning, everyone. Good morning. I would like to say, parents, thank you for the help you have given us over the years. You helped guided us on our way of life, watched over us as we grow into what we are today. It would have been hard if we did it all by ourselves, and that's why God has sent you to us. Thank you. Next, we'll have a uh, wisdom for the graduates by Sister Trendy Taylor. Personally, at the beginning of my freshman year in college, I did not think that my professors would remember my name, mainly because they had 500 other students to attend to. But as I participated and went to their office hours, they began to know my name, knew the problem with my assignments, and easily assisted me. This was the same with my advisor. Because I went to my chemistry advisor, asking about clubs and organizations that specialize in my field of study, I was always first recommended for exclusive programs at the school, so please get to know who they are. And lastly, rule number four, take a breath. I know work can take a lot out of you, and sometimes you should want to rip out your hair because of it. But after a while, take a break. Drink some water, maybe watch a funny video to calm your mind. I tell you this because without a calm mind, your work will become harder and it's so please, slow your mind for a minute and breathe. It's going to be okay. <laughs> please remember these four rules. These four rules help you maintain a high GPA, get into honors college, and the dean's list. And I hope these four rules can help you and you achieve the same in your future. Congratulations. Sister Trinity, I need those four rules when I started off. <laughs> but seriously, work-life balance is very important, especially for your emotional and spiritual journey. God gives us a time to rest and a time to work, so we have to commune with him, and not only just commune with him, but he gives us other people to help as well. So next off, we're going to go into the presentations which is the promotions by Sister Peril Humphrey. While we wait on Sister Humphrey to come for the presentations, um, we'll just take a step back into the uh, presentation for the graduates. Um, when the program started, we had some printing issues, uh, but we worked through those issues, and um, I was reading from a draft, but with the final copy, we have two graduates' bios that were not read, and because these graduates worked so hard and were diligent in everything that they did, we want to make sure that they get recognized. All right, and so the first graduate that I have had to leave um, 
You would have seen him. He probably was as tall as this building when he walked out of here. But it's our very own baby that we watch grow in this church, Joshua Davis. And so here's Joshua's bio. Joshua is the son of Marcus and Mel Davis. And Mel, I know you're in here. Woohoo! Uh, and the grandson of Betty and Jerry Davis, Grandma. Woohoo! Joshua is graduating from Energy Institute High School with a 4.0 GPA. Amen. While being the team captain of the basketball, golf, track, and cross country teams, leading all four sports to district championships. Y'all, that's a praise moment. That's a praise moment. Joshua is also a member of the Mount Horb Youth Choir and Sunday School. Woohoo! He is a senior member of the Treasurer of the National Honor Society and Secretary for the National Society for Black Engineers at Energy Institute High School. Amen, amen. Joshua has over 200 community service hours, volunteers at Coast, in Costa Rica for a month building a community center and was chosen to be an ambassador for the Houston Amigos de las Americas region. He is currently a certified Red Cross lifeguard at Bel Air Pool and a deputy voter registrar for the city of Houston. Come on, y'all. I'm not even done reading. Joshua has received acceptance letters from 12 HBCUs. Amen, amen. Including Florida A&M University, Fisk University, Texas Southern University, and Howard University. He plans to attend Howard University on a $20,000 scholarship. Woohoo! And will major in architecture. Joshua plans to become an architect in the city of Houston and manage a real estate business whose main goal is to provide affordable housing to his community. Amen. And he will do it. He quotes that, helping everyday people from my neighborhood is my aspirations because everyone deserves a beautiful place to call home. Y'all give him a big round of applause. Mel, make sure he goes back and watch this. Joshua sat through as long as he could. And I wish he was here to hear that get read because, oh my goodness, this is so awesome. So congratulations to the Davis family. What an amazing, amazing child you all produced. All right, next up we have Kendra Thompson. Kendra. Kendra is our baby, y'all. Kendra is graduating from high school law of law and I'm sorry, High School for Law and Justice. She is the daughter of Kenneth Thompson and Yolanda Williams. It's her mommy singing in the choir. She is cheer captain and, volley and a volleyball player at her high school. She is also a member of BPA, Business Professionals of America, and will be graduating June 12th. After graduation, she plans to attend HCC to attend her real estate, to gain or obtain her real estate license. This, woohoo! This summer, she plans to work for a leasing agency. Amazing. Mount Horror produces productive people. Amen.
Hello everyone, I'll be reading the promotion. Pre-K to pre-kindergarten, we have Dessa Marquise Franklin, Jr. Stevens, <laughs> elementary to middle school, Chauncey Franklin, <laughs> Logan Davis. Good afternoon, everyone. I have the privilege of reading, uh, presenting the high school graduates. Okay, I have Joshua Davis, Energy Institute High School graduate. I have Isola Nicole Janice Flood, Westfield High School graduate. I have Deshaun Henry, Marshall Senior High School graduate. Have Xavier James, Klein Forest High School graduate. Have Kiara Kyles, Hendrickson High School graduate. I have Kendra Thompson, high school for law and justice graduate. I have Ramaya Winters, Stafford High School graduate. And Bryson Yarbrough, but she wasn't able to attend today. These are our 2022 graduates. James Klein Forest graduate. He's okay. Okay, these are our twenty twenty two graduates. You all can give them an applause.
want to thank you for joining us today for this graduation celebration. We have a couple of more graduates that we want to celebrate. Um, Tayshawn is graduating from college. We want to ask him to come up. our very own uh, sister, Tiara Rodriguez, who is graduating from PV. Before we uh, get to the Mount Horeb Awards, we have a special award coming from Dr. Johnson, so we're going to hear her at this time. What a wonderful opportunity, what a wonderful program, and what a wonderful platform. For so many years, my mom wanted to uh, provide a scholarship for somebody, and every year we would listen as people would present scholarships, and we never were financially able to do that. And my mom passed away. And uh, my sisters are older, and we are chronologically falling off the list and I don't know if there will ever be a time where we will be financially able to do it and what a wonderful year that we have a grandbaby that's graduating this year that we are so profoundly proud of and this is my last year I've been in academics for 45 years I've been a nurse for 45 years and Tuesday was my last day and so uh, with a lot of unimpried care, we'd like to present you with this small token of appreciation in honor of our mom. If you come and take this from us, and because the Jakara got the only baby, so we may not even be here by the time they graduate. So we have to give it to you. You share that with our pastor, and and it's just a little something. <laughs> And I hope that next year we will be able to do that again for somebody else's child, if, if the Lord let us live. For the last 10 years, we have been receiving uh, $5,000 a year from the Houston Public Library. There was a donor who gave the money to the, the Houston Public Library so that they could give it to us in $5,000 increments. And over the last 10 years, the, we have had several students who have gone through Mount Horeb and received this financial assistance. 
the criteria for the award was that that student would attend Sunday school on a regular basis and that was the criteria for the S.H. Smith um, Award. And this year, the, for the last two years, we have had Sunday school remotely. Unfortunately, this year, we did not have anyone who attended Sunday school um, to qualify for that, um, that award. Now, this year is our last year that we get the $5,000 from the library. And so uh, we have to give it to someone. And so we are still deliberating on how we're going to do that because we can't change the criteria just because we want to make sure that we get that those funds to someone. I want to thank the graduates who came out to participate in our graduation today. In your envelope, you will find a $50 bill, I mean a $50 check from the Christian Education Department. I suggest that you remember what uh, Dr. Moton said and what Trinity said and what Sister My Unique said about being prudent. So if I were you, I would take that money and put it up and put it towards my education. Uh, we had some glitches this year in the, um, the process of doing our awards for the other Christian education funds. So we are telling uh, Sister Kendra and Brother Davis that we will be speaking to you after today to see if we can't work those glitches out. Mm -hmm. To the rest of the graduates, congratulations. We're so proud of the progress that you've made. To our young people who are going from one grade to the next, look at this front row and that second row and aspire to sit there on that first row and then sit on that second row in your future. We want to thank you for joining us today. I'm going to ask that the co-director would come right now and have a couple of words, and then we're going to turn it over to the pastor. Amen. Thank you all for coming out and participating in today's program. I will just leave you uh, before my pastor gives his message with just this beautiful note that he's included to the graduates. To the youth of, high, of higher learning, joy fills my heart when I think that there are youth in the world today, such as you, who are trying to keep our world afloat. While others are giving up the classroom for the streets, knowledge for dope, wisdom for whiskey, and understanding for foolishness, I would like to share with you a motto that I constructed to help keep me going as a youth, as well as an adult. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I'll say it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Remember that and keep that close to your heart. Wisdom is the principal tool, therefore get wisdom. Understanding is, is a necessary tool, get understanding. Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth comes expressions that can easily be understood by all. May you always remember that, may you always remember he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And that's Pastor Smith, May 1973, this comes to you from the class of 1973, which is Ben Cheeks, Diane Davis, Diane M. Davis, Bertha Robinson, Joel Robinson, Raynell Scott, Daryl Smith, Eva Stewart, Eileen Walker. Those with asterisks are deceased, so we do this in their remembrance. Thank you all. Now, the young lady.
that you just heard uh, Trinity that spoke that's her mother amen and one of the graduates that graduated with honors we're going to ask you to stand. Yeah. That's her other daughter. The one that spoke. That, that's, her, that's her other daughter. Amen. So it pays to set a good example. You see the fruit of your labor. Some years ago, when one of our graduates was just a little girl, she came down the aisle and sung for pastor. She has a very beautiful voice. And when it was said that she would be one of the graduates, I said to her, are you going to sing for me? And she smiled and said, yes. So come and sing for me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Kesey, but I go by Kiara at school. <laughs> and um, I do have a little bit of stage fright, but he's right. I sung a really long time ago when I was super young. <laughs> and um, I guess I'll sing the Okay. <laughs> and y'all can repeat after me if you want. Okay. He's the lily of the valley. He's my bright and morning star. Gave his life for me on Calvary. For my sins he bears a star. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes something like this. Y'all can repeat after me. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus Let us stand. I want to thank each of you for your participants, your presence, and everything that you have done to assure us of having a very successful graduation day. I'm going to ask that you would continue to pray for these young people. 
because prayer changes things. Amen. And uh, I wonder, do we have any May babies present? If you're born in May, would you raise your hand? We have any? Amen. Ra raise your hand high if you were born in May. Amen. We want to celebrate you. Amen. With happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, May baby. Happy birthday to you. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us until we all gather around the throne of grace to depart no more. In the name of Jesus, let the whole church say, Amen. God bless you. You are excused.